Welcome to Small Arm Solutions. Today we're looking at uh, the SIG P320 M17 against the M17 commemorative. This is something I would have liked to have done a long time ago, uh, but I have had a very difficult time getting access to one of the M17 commemoratives. Uh, even as a writer, uh, when they first came out, I told them I wanted one, and they said these are only going to certain distributors because there's only 5,000 of them being made, so I had uh, great difficulty getting my hands on one, so my review was on the P320 M17 and the commercial model. Well, if you go back to the original video on the P320 M17, what you have there is totally relevant for both pistols, uh, for as far as durability, reliability, everything that you have there, all the weights, every, everything is identical on both of these. Where this really comes down to the differences is the way the guns are marked, configurations, which we're going to get into. Now, the P320 M17 is considered the commercial version. It's their most produced version, um, MSRP of $768. It's been a very, very uh, popular gun for SIG. On the M70 commemorative, you're looking at about $1,122 for an MSRP, and these are very rare. Uh, according to SIG, they were only authorized $5,000 by the U.S. government. And what that meant was uh, the way the, the slides were marked and the way the parts were marked, they were identical to the U.S. government gun. So they had to get permission to make a commemorative run uh, of this pistol, because obviously this is a big deal for SIG. I mean, having the contract for the uh, you know, U.S. service pistol is, is a really big deal. So they offered their customers the ability to uh, have one of the original ones. Now, when you look at the two of them, if you want a shooter, you want to go with a commercial, the P320 M17. That's, a, that's, that, that's your shooter. The guy who wants to go after the M17 commemorative is a guy like me who uh, who who likes the military small arms, who wants to get the exact same thing as the U.S. military has, collector's item. Uh, and that's exactly what it was. Now, at first I was sort of disappointed that SIG didn't just make them like this. You know, why, you know, why did you have to make two different versions? But according to their, their reps, they were saying that uh, because of the way it was marked, they had to get permission. Now, this is not new. If you go back to the Mark 25, the SIG 226 for you know, the Navy SEAL pistol, they had to get permission to use the Mark 25 designation and to sell it commercially the same way. Uh, the SEALs were a lot more forgiving than the U.S. government was because they weren't given a, you know, a, a limit on how many they could make. So uh, it, it came to make it make a little more sense later on down the road as to why uh, they were only allowed to do 5,000 of these and why they couldn't do the same configurations on both. Now, looking at the specifications for both, you're looking at both 9mm. Um, if you look at the P320 M17, it comes in this plastic case, uh, which is typical of any SIG. And it comes with two of the 17-shot magazines, operator's manual, and you get one of these little nifty uh, M17 patches. Now, when you look over at the M17, you see a cardboard, the cardboard case here with a uh, foam cutout. Now, there were people who complained, oh, this is a, you know... A, Love her dollar gun. Why has it got this cheap cardboard case? Because this is the exact case in the way they're delivered to the U.S. government. The exact same brown boxes, the exact same foam inserts, the manuals. This is the exact way. And that was the whole point of the uh, commemorative is to have it the exact same way it went to the military. We're going to get into the, the technical aspects of this gun coming up in a few minutes, but just giving some of the basic uh, information on it. You have a, a a polymer modular full-size frame. Uh, these are the full-size M17 pistols as opposed to the uh, compact version of the M18. Now, to my knowledge, SIG is not released at P320 M18. It's only the M17 so far as I know right now. You're looking at a Coyote PVD finish on the slides. Uh, part of the requirement was to have this, this, this Coyote tan or a uh, flat dark earth color, and it's the finish that they went with. The slide is solid stainless steel. It's a striker-fired pistol, uh, replacing the uh, double single action of the Beretta M9. Now, that's been sort of controversial. Some people prefer the double single over the striker. Uh, they like that because you could have a, a, a second strike capability. Uh, say your first time you uh, you f try to fire the round, the round doesn't go off. You have the ability to pull the trigger again uh, to try to fire it again. Uh, this one here, you would have to just eject the round and go to another round. Uh, weight 29.6 ounces with a height of 5.5 inches. And when you look at what the accessories that these come with, now again, this one is two magazines, two 17 shot magazines. This comes with the same magazines that it comes with for the US government. You have two of the 21 round magazines, as well as it comes with one of the uh, 17 round magazines that's in place right now. Now, again, only 5,000 were made. What we're going to really spend our time on right now is going over uh, what makes these two different, which is the markings. On top we have here is the M17 commemorative, and down here we have the uh, M17 P320. Now, first thing we're going to look at is the is the markings, most critical uh, of anything, at least to me anyways. This has a proper U.S. government mark where it says Sig Sauer M17. And you also notice you have here, you have a cage code, and you have a part number for the slide that's, that's on the slide here. When you look down at the Sig P320 M17, you see Sig Sauer P320, then over here you have M17, so this differentiates it from the U.S. government guns. 
Another interesting aspect of it versus the change of events was the commemorative has the tan controls. Now, the first guns that were that were uh, provided to the U.S. government had these tan controls. However, the ones that are currently being produced right now have the black. The reason being was they found that the black was far more durable than this uh, than this tan color. Current production ones are going to have black instead of uh, tan. However, this gun here was meant to commemorate the initial run of pistols that came out. The initial run had uh, the tan control. So you can see we had this assembling lever here. We had the uh, ambi slide release, and we also had the manual safety, which was part of the requirement. The frames on these two are the exact same. The triggers are the exact same. You have the exact same uh, trigger mechanism. You do have, which we're going to get into this in a second here, is when we take it apart. The guns are designed just a little bit different, uh, and a lot of that has to do with the weight of the slide. These, the M17 commemorative uh, is the U.S. government pistol, and the U.S. government pistol fires NATO ammunition. Now, NATO ammunition is significantly higher in pressure than the standard uh, commercial ammunition, so this is designed to fire the plus P M882 ball round, which is about a, a velocity of 1180 foot a second, which is plus P for as far as Sammy's concerned. That's what this pistol is designed to shoot day in, day out, all the time. Developed the Stig P320 M17, this was not to fire this ammunition. This was to fire pretty much everything that was out there in the commercial industry. So from hydro, hot loads to, to lower loads to 115 grain to 147 to, uh, to the lower pressures. In order to make this gun work properly with all that ammunition, they had to take some weight out of the slide. When we take these apart, we're going to see that. So that was a difference that they had to do with the P320 M17 being a commercial pistol. Uh, where with the M17, this was designed, again, to fire uh, the high-pressure military ball ammunition. Of course, the serial number ranges on these are uh, are different from the U.S. government ones. That's definitely one of the things you have to change. Uh, both of them have the same removable uh, rear sight panel here where you can install your RMR type sight. You do have night sights on both. You do notice you do have a slightly different uh, type of a of a top on the M17 P320 versus the M17. Uh, this is a different configuration. For as far as their compatibility, I'm not quite sure if they're compatible or not, but the ones for the M17 are different. Now, when we flip it over, the pistols are basically identical. The biggest difference is, is you will find the cage code uh, of SIG on the right side of the barrel on the, on the commemorative. Now, the one thing that I was not sure of, and I was not able to get anybody at SIG to confirm or deny any of this, Normally, U.S. government weapons will have a PM or a proof uh, manic particle inspected mark on the slide and on the barrel, and generally like the M9 the locking block. Basically, what that indicates is that uh, at the factory, this went through a uh, proof cartridge, and then it was checked for stress fractures. And then normally, they would uh, these are actually PM on there for proof tested and inspected. So there's none of that on the commemorative. So I'm not sure if the, the guns do have a PMs on them or any of those proof marks on them or not, and no one's been able to confirm that there are so few of these guns in uh, circulation right now. I didn't have anybody who I could really check on. Uh, so that's that is the one question that I, I still leave from this that I don't have the answer to, is that there is a PM on the slide and on the barrel. Now we're going to take these apart. We'll take a look at the inside of the slides. Now the first thing that we're going to notice on here is this is all solid in here. And we'll see on the P320 M17, the material has been milled out of the slide to make the slide lighter. As I previously stated, that was for this, for this pistol to be compatible with all types of ammunition, uh, lighter as well as heavy ammunition. Now, uh, again, the SIG M17 commemorative, military pistol, military high-pressure ammunition, so you had the entire mass on the, on the slide. Also, you notice we have a uh, lighter recoil spring so can that's denoted by the orange on here. Uh, this is a lighter recoil spring, also, so this pistol will work with various kinds of ammunition versus the M17, which is designed to work properly with the higher pressure ammunition. When you look at the frames, you will see uh, that it's very, very similar. There are some minor changes uh, on, the, on the M17. Uh, we're not exactly sure how they, you know, how they work. Uh, mostly, it has to do with some of the just the shapes of some of the components, and uh, like your firing pin block uh, lever here is a little bit different in the way that it's shaped. Um, you do have the, the same modular type uh, removal of that, which we're going to show here. To remove the, uh, the trigger module, you pop out like so. And there you have it. Now, something I want to reiterate, which has been said, uh, and I keep trying to let people know this was not the case. This was not what made this gun modular and the Glock not. 
This had absolutely nothing to do with that modularity. The modularity had to do with the grip size, the magazine, the barrel length. Those were all the requirements for modularity uh, that came out. This was not any, this had nothing to do with it. Uh, this was a feature of this gun uh, for as far as how useful it's going to be. It's going to be, uh, it's going to remain to be seen. Uh, is the Army actually going to be replacing trigger modules in different grip frames and replacing slides? Somehow I doubt it. Uh, somehow I think you're going to get the gun issued as is. This just uh, shows how easy it is to remove the, the trigger module. Like right, so. Something latch release lever. Like so. Now the pistols do have a live cartridge indicator. If there's a round to be in the chamber, that would stick up like so. Uh, you'd be able to either feel that or see that. As I previously mentioned, you do have Sig Light uh, Trigicon front sights. Manual safety, which is also which is ambidextrous, and the magazine release is also reversible uh, for modularity as far as uh, being ambidextrous. So there you have looking at both pistols. Why would you want one over the other? As previously stated, uh, if you are a collector, the the you know, the, P, the P320 uh, M17 is not the way to go. You want to go with the the commemorative. If you are going to be a shooter, you're going to be taking this gun out to the range. You're going to be shooting it. Uh, the P320 M17 is definitely the way to go. Now, I imagine that there's still quite a few of these left. A lot of people, when they saw the price tags of them, they just, they just weren't going to do it. You know, uh, I know a lot of guys who are collectors and they saw the price tag, you know, $700 worth is worth, you know, versus $1,100. Uh, yeah, I think I'll just go with the P320 M17 because it's close enough for government work. Uh, you know, I agree. You know, but there are those of us out there who, if there's something out there that's exactly like the U.S. government gets, that's what we want. So which pistol is for you? As I previously stated, the 6R and the P320 M17 is the commercial model. You're looking at around $700. This is the one if you're going to go out to the range and you're just going to shoot it up. Uh, this particular one is designed to fire all commercial grade ammunition uh, from the lightest loads to the heavier loads. Uh, this will be definitely the way to go. For those of us who appreciate the collector's value of the, of the commemorative, we will uh, spend the extra money to be able to have the same markings of the U.S. government gun. Uh, so that's very well uh, worthwhile for the true collector. Now you can also get for an additional couple hundred dollars, you can get a wooden display case uh, for the M17 to, to hang up on your wall as well. As far as is the U.S. military switching over to the tan controls, to the black, I imagine you're going to see some people who are going to want to take these tan ones and replace them with the black. So that way they would have which more currently uh, used by the U.S. military. They'll still have the proper markings on here, but they'll be even more correct with the proper uh, color of the the safety and the slide stop and the disassembly natural release lever. The next thing I want to talk about really briefly is the ammunition. U.S. military pistol designed for, for NATO ammunition. SIG has come out with a commercial ammunition. They call it the M17 line. What the M17 is is basically the M882 ball ammunition. M882 ball is 124 grain bullet going 1180 foot a second. It is a plus P rating uh, on the SAMI scale, uh, which would be what the M17 military version, or the commemorative here, is designed for. And we also have a V-Crown 124 grain jack at the hollow point, which is also loaded with those same pressures. So say basically is saying that you can practice with the same ammunition that you carry. Uh, just it's not as expensive because you're shooting a ball instead of the, you know, the hollow point. But the reality is, is to make your SIG M17 commemorative work uh, properly, you're going to use the exact same ammunition that you uh, use in the military. Now, SIG is providing ammunition to the U.S. military. That was part of the M17 program, was them being able to uh, provide ammunition. Uh, SIG has a very wide variety of ammunition at 9mm, uh, which you know I've used on a regular basis, 115 grain, 124 grain, 147 full metal jackets, and then all those same ones they have in the V-Crown as well. They have an excellent match, 147 grain projectile, uh, which I have incredible accuracy with. And there's some other ones out there that are more for the compact guns where you get uh, more of a lighter recoil uh, out of some of the smaller guns. Uh, but the uh, M17 ammunition, is again, again, if you're looking for military-grade uh, military pressures, that's what that ammunition is for. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm glad I was able to be able to do a comparative video between the two. There are still some unanswered questions. You know, the unanswered question for me still is, do they have the PM marks or the proof marks on them from, a, from the verification proof testing? 
um, until I actually get my hands on a, a U.S. government one. I'm not going to know what that is. I did check around with some of my viewers out there who are currently active military, but there are so few people that actually have these issued so far. I mean, this gun is still brand new. Um, very few uh, units have been issued these. So uh, we hope to be checking up on that. Now, the pistol still has had some of its growing, growing pains. It still had some issues with durability and reliability. Uh, it's now going through uh, getting all those things uh, you know, during the development process cleaned up here. And uh, we're going to see this pistol uh, probably serving with us for the next 20, 30 years. Again, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please click like, please subscribe, even better share. Thank you.